invisible irritant, disease spreading pest, destroyer of crops, or mere factories churning out products. Is that all insects are? Train your lenses on these creatures and you will find an astounding other world. A world where events unfold in a fraction of a second. Where razor-sharp decisions are made in record time. Where secret languages convey information without words. And superhuman mechanics reach unimaginable speeds. What happens in the unique world of insects? That's a question of science. Four hundred million years ago, nearly three hundred and fifty million years before any vertebrate animal walked the earth, the first insects emerged onto dry land. Through the ravages of time and massive upheavals in climate and geology, they endured. But they didn't just survive, they thrived. Today, Insects are the most populous on the planet, with more numbers of individuals and species than any other animal. Added together, their biomass outweighs all other animals on Earth combined. What makes insects one of nature's most successful life forms? That's the question being asked by scientist and insect enthusiast Sanjay Sane at Bangalore's National Center for Biological Sciences. I'm crazy about insects. I uh, can't get enough of them. You know, the simple little creatures, you might think they are helpless, are actually extraordinarily smart. So how exactly are insects smart in a way that's different from humans? Insects, specifically flying insects, were the first animals to fly in the natural world. This, along with their tiny sizes, gave them powers that bigger species just didn't have. For example, they could crawl into cramped, inaccessible spaces to seek out food and be safe from predators. But the biggest edge came from flight. Flight allowed them to reach areas that no one else could access. Flight also gave them a unique perspective, a high-speed, turbulent world that whizzes past so quickly that humans can barely see or sense it. You and I are extremely slow and sluggish compared to a standard insect, a flying insect at the very least. Just how slow are we compared to insects? To you and I, a standard light bulb in our homes appears quite stable in its beam. But here's how it looks to an insect. A regular light bulb flickers 50 to 60 times a second, a phenomenon so quick that it doesn't even register to the human eye. It's a whole other story for the insect. A typical flying insect will flap its wings 100 to 200 times a second. It can't afford to have human-like sluggish vision. And so, it captures every flicker of the light bulb, along with every high-speed event that you and I wouldn't even notice. This begs the question, what sort of biological system allows insects to react and respond so quickly. The system has to be something that senses very fast. It is able to process very fast, which is able to respond very fast. And in all these matters, insects are way ahead of us. Flying insects like common house flies have an intricate biology, one that is tailor-made for this high-speed world. Flies have wings, to help them move aerodynamically through the air. They have a compound eye, made up of thousands of individual units to detect split-second movements. They have muscular legs that give them lift for takeoffs and position them for perfect landings. There are antennae to detect any mechanical sensations like wind turbulence or vibrations. And they have unique organs called halteres which act like stabilizing gyroscopes to ensure a balanced flight. All in all, a housefly that you and I try so hard to get rid of is a sophisticated system. 
It does everything a military or commercial aircraft can, but much, much faster. They are fascinating animals. They flap uh, about 200 to 250 times a second. So it's faster than an eye blink. Notice that its true legs are uh, stretched because the fly knows it's going to land. It pitches up very slowly. Note how perfect this maneuver is. It's, you know, the fly is completely in control of it. And all of this is happening in a matter of literally 60 milliseconds. Now, how is a fly able to do this in such a short amount of time? This is just one of the questions that Sanjay Sarney's lab is experimenting to answer. Researchers here delve into the complex mechanisms that go into insect flight. They're asking, how do insects use their powers of vision or smell in flight? How do they use mechanosensory organs like antennae or whole tears? Do these different types of sensory organs act independently or do they collaborate? And how does an insect generate high-speed responses and make rapid-fire decisions? The lab looks at all these questions from every possible angle – sensory, muscular, neurological and behavioural. One of the experiments revolves around honeybees and how they control their flights using eyes for vision and antennae for mechanosensory perception. The bee is immobilized and mounted on a rig. Then it is placed inside a black box which allows no light to enter. When the bee emerges from the dark, it is exposed to computer screens with running stripe patterns. The bee is now at the center of attention with multiple high-speed cameras trained exclusively on it. They capture how the bee reacts to the visual stimuli of stripes. They also capture how this affects its antennae movement. This gives researchers invaluable insight into how vision and mechanosensory responses are connected. The bee has to get information from two different channels, process them, integrate them and then react to them. What makes it interesting is if these two information gives you conflicting uh, information, which one do you react to? Do you process them, figure out, balance out something and then give it a net result or do you rely on one more than the other? These are questions that we are looking at. Not too far from here, another experiment gives the same question a different twist. This time, researchers are studying the relationship between an insect's vision and powers of smell. The housefly is given a serious challenge to locate its food source by following a tempting smell, all while navigating a visual landmark presented by a black sphere. Have the fly, you know, moving and then the trace follows it. If you uh, put the landmark around your resource, then only it causes fly to pass cast extra. The experiment asks, what will the fly depend on more to control its flight? Vision, odor or both? This basic setup allows you to get into the mind of the insect. You can say, okay, so what was the insect trying to do? Is it tracking the visual object or the odor source? In the experiment, an odor source, typically a food item like fruit juice, is positioned inside a wind tunnel. As a distraction, a black landmark is placed some distance away from it. The insect pursues the food odour, but then it encounters the black landmark. So, what is surprising is that a uh, fly is keeping track of landmarks, but the landmarks are actually making the search uh, slower. Researchers observe how this affects the fly's original search. They track it using high-speed cameras and collate the data digitally. In retracing the fly's flight path, a lot can be learned. Oh, 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 so. Oh, yeah. so if you turn it like this, uh, turn it the other way. Mm -hmm. huh. So this, this, you know, this search thing happens below this order. Okay, but when then it goes in front of the object. We have quantified: uh, is that fly tend to search more uh, before making a that same decision of landing on the order source? So 
the final outcome is same but the approach it's before that is completely modified because of the surroundings these behavioral experiments show that insects are capable of making complex decisions extremely quickly so the next logical inquiry is how is this decision making happening at a neural level researchers want to understand how insect neurons process two types of information visual and mechanical to ensure smooth flight control neurosurgery is tough enough in us humans imagine carrying out the same in small insects the insect chosen for this operation is the oleander hawk moth its size enables scientists to reach into its ventral nerve cord and record its activity with an electrode i'll be uh, recording from within one particular neuron uh, using a very fine electrode and trying to see how these two informations are encoded by the neuron such neurological tests are conducted to discover which neuron corresponds to which sensory perception be it vision mechanical stability or motor control the results once more reinforce just how intelligent insects are and do you find any neurons yes we found several neurons which uh, respond just to mechanical stimulus just to visual stimulus and few which respond to both of them mapping the nervous system of insects can give us precious clues into what enables insects to fly for india these types of inquiries have been long overdue in the early days post independence a lot of attention was paid to entomology or insect studies as part of agricultural research but for a nation grappling with food shortages insects were only interesting as crop destroying pests unfortunately these entomologists were taught how to kill insects not how to study them from the perspective of studying the other aspects of insect like flight or chemical ecology or all of these different things uh, there is unfortunately not much of a tradition now there's a fresh swarm of indian entomologists dedicated to unearthing the fascinating world of insects they're coming from disciplines like neuroscience physiology physics and even aerospace engineering to understand how these complex creatures behave from training insects to fly directly into lab setups to breeding insects and operating high end digital rigs this group of scientists is venturing into a niche of the wild reserved only for insects the idea is to see how a female moth can track its host plant in wild and that is the reason we are doing this experiment in a in a cage outside the lab so that we can provide it a semi environment to a female moth when it is in in the in a in a forest there are tons of plants around and it is extremely difficult to uh, to identify its host plant and lay eggs only on the, on the host plant so this behavior is what we are very interested in closely linked to flight behaviors of insects is one of the most fascinating questions in entomology how do insects communicate the answer is different for different insects in 1973 austrian scientist karl von frisch won the nobel prize for cracking the secret language of bees he revealed that honey bees communicated using a dance called the waggle dance this dance told other bees about the location of food the speed of the waggle of the bee's posterior showed how far the food was the axis or orientation of this waggle movement indicated which direction the food source was in relative to the sun but you might start thinking that there are problems here why because the sun is not in the same place all the time 
So the bees need to be able to compensate for the fact that the sun moves in the sky. And they can. But it's not just bees that have remarkable languages. Moths, crickets, cicadas and other species have unique mating communication from chemical to auditory. These are astonishingly accurate strategies where a female can localize her mate in a crowd of males. Even ants have an extremely sophisticated communication system. Ants will communicate to each other using chemical means. It will lay a chemical on the ground and that chemical can have many different uh, connotations. It may be a repulsive chemical, it could be an attractive chemical. The world of insects is indeed very different from the one humans inhabit. But that doesn't mean we can't get along. Bugs like mosquitoes, flies or cockroaches aren't just disease spreading pests. And insects like bees aren't only valuable for the products they make. In fact, some cutting-edge technologists are finding a whole new reason for studying insects. Robotics, aerospace, chemistry, defense engineering. Hardly areas one would associate with buzzing, crawling, flying or creeping insects. But new age engineers are swarming to study them in a bid to artificially replicate them. Imagine robotic bees that can reach inhospitable heights to carry out scientific research. Or cockroach-like machines that can crawl into tight spaces to detect oil, coal or even unexploded landmines. Imagine sensors that mimic the sophisticated vision of insects. Or rescue robots that can travel in harsh or disaster-hit terrains. But there's a bigger, or rather tinier reason why insect-like robots are ideal. Take the example of a mega science endeavor like Mars exploration. Conventional wisdom would suggest a single large robot that's packed with all kinds of sensors to collect different information and samples. The problem with that is that a robot like that, if it goes out and fails, because these are all in inhospitable environments, you get nothing back for all the effort that you put in. A different paradigm of looking at it is to do it the way insects do it, which is you send hundreds of probes out or thousands of probes out, and even if half of them fail, you still get something back. And so, engineers around the world are looking closely at the intricate biology of insects to build futuristic machines. The lab at NCBS is no different. We are trying to understand how flies move about in, in, in the real world. So what we want to do is understand how motion of the wing relates to these body movements. The fly is remarkably gifted in 3D choreography. It's a lesson in aerodynamic aerobics with the ability to pitch up or tilt down, roll sideways or display yawing movement. How do its wings execute these maneuvers in a split second? To find out, experimentalists build a maze through which a fly makes its way. In negotiating the maze, its wings and body work together seamlessly. Each of these moves is recorded by high-speed cameras. We are trying to find out by filming them how they do what they do. We are not trying to mimic it, but we are trying to get close to it so that we can build vehicles called micro-air vehicles, which are these small vehicles which can fly into confined spaces. All engineering uh, that we do is uh, indirectly learned from nature because nature is our best teacher. In studying insects, we return to nature and its astonishing secrets. Like the mathematical dance by which bees talk to each other, or the chemical trails that ants leave behind to communicate with fellow ants, or the zen-like praying mantis that exploits the imperfections of others to catch its prey. At any given time, there are a million dramas playing out in the insect world, ones that are as thrilling as anything we create in the human world. So the next time you encounter an insect, look closer. Don't blink or you just might miss it. 
if you'd like to share your feedback on today's program, please send your suggestions and comments to Vigyan Prasar, C24 Kutub Institutional Area, New Delhi, 110016. Or you can mail us at info at vigyanprasar.gov.in.